In a time where most of us spend increasing amounts of time on our screens, it is important that organisations who operate websites protect themselves from any risk their websites may pose to them. It is so easy to either create or have commissioned a website that often any legal obligations the organisation owes in respect to the said websites are overlooked. There are, depending on the type of organisation you are, a number of requirements and I will seek to go over just a few of those. Generally speaking, there are two facets to protect an organisation on a website. One, ensuring the organisation is compliant with information requirements. And two, protecting the organisation from other people. All websites operating in the UK are still subject to e-commerce regulations and will continue to do so for at least the foreseeable future. It is likely that when changes are made in European legislation, the UK will also follow in this regard. The e-commerce regulations impose an obligation on all website operators to provide certain information to their service users, such as the name of the service provider and the service provider's email address. When selling services online, there is even more information that must be published in accordance with consumer rights laws. Details of the information required under the e-commerce regulations and the Consumer Rights Directive can be provided upon request. The next area to consider is data protection. The Data Protection Act implemented the General Data Protection Regulations into UK law and it remains in force. Organisations must account to individuals to inform them about prescribed information. That includes how they process their personal data, what lawful reason they have to process the data, what they do with it, etc. As such, any website which allows an end user to insert data into it must account to that individual as to how that data is being used. This is usually done in the form of a privacy notice. The notice must be available to the user the moment they insert the data and in accordance with the Act, they must give consent to the data being processed in such a way. Website operators also need to consider cookies. Cookies are text files containing small amounts of information which a website operator can place within the equipment of an end user's device and are on most websites. The purpose of a cookie is usually to allow the website operator to recognise a user's device and store information about previous visits, to enable the website to work and track preferences, etc. The Privacy and Electronic Communications Regulations impose an obligation on website operators to provide clear and comprehensible information about the purposes of the storage of or access to the information. The end user must give free consent to the use of cookies on their equipment before they are placed on it. This is why you will often find banners popping up on the screen asking you to consent when you go onto new websites. The Website Terms of Use and Acceptable Use Policy are two documents which seek to protect the website operator from a number of claims against them or inappropriate content being added to their website, if there is a facility for end users to upload content, that is. From a legal perspective, they are key to protecting the organisation from a myriad of risks. All works created. This includes images, formulation of words, photographs, designs, logos, etc. are subject to copyright, and it is a breach of copyright laws to copy work that belongs to someone else. Organisations should ensure that they are entitled to use anything that they contain on their website. Equally, this means that the organisation's website is, in most instances, protected from anyone that seeks to copy it. Because the internet is so accessible across the world, breaches of copyrights appear to be fairly common ground these days. We often have clients contacting us because their photos have been used on another site, or another company's webpage looks the same as theirs. Whilst layout is always a tricky issue, photos and obvious copies of work are easier to argue and there is a route to take to rectify the situation. Where the organisation has a brand or logo, it is always best to seek to trademark it to protect the organisation's position in the event someone does copy the organisation's work but then claim it was theirs first. As you can see, there is a lot of legislation to consider 
and a lot of practical matters too when considering the legality of a website. Our advice to organisations creating a new website or reviewing their current ones is that they should undertake a careful legal review of the requirements based on the specific offering the website will be providing. For further information or to make an appointment, contact me, Joe O'Donovan.